Today we're looking at a really sweet blaster. This right here was sent in from Frontline Foam. Thank you Frontline Foam for sending this in. And if you'd like to support the Dr. Flux channel and purchase one of these today using the official Dr. Flux affiliate link, a link will be provided in the description. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about what we have going on here. What kind of blaster is this? What kind of performance do we get? And what are my overall impressions of the pigeon created by Mr. Heath Pants and printed by Frontline Foam? Let's go ahead and jump right into the video. What do we got here? Well, <laughs> there's a few things going on here. Um, let's run down the uh, the not so great, and we'll start with the first thing that I'm gonna be I'm gonna admit it's my fault. Basically, this blaster, as you can see, I'm gonna pull that off, has a slide. Basically, it's like a blowback feature. So what happened was I had this larger battery. This is a 3S LiPo and this little guy right here, the little data cable that you know, we'll call, I think it's called the balance lead. That thing got caught in there and me being, uh, you know, Mr. Caveman brain, I was just like, oh, pull harder. And so I pulled that trigger harder and I snapped it. And uh, yeah, that made me sad. So I was like, okay, you know what? This is a great opportunity to show off some 3D printing. So I went and pulled down the files, threw it on the 3D printer. And for all of you, I wanted to show you a glorious time lapse of printing the part. And after I got the part printed, I then opened up the blaster to replace the trigger assembly and realized I had print the non-blowback version. <laughs> so, you know, back to the drawing board, I went and printed it again. But yeah, it's a pretty easy thing to print. I did print in a higher infill than I normally print. I think I put it up at like 50%. So hopefully this trigger is a little bit stronger um, I don't want to completely fault Frontline Foam because it was me being dumb. Like, just keep in mind, uh, with this design, like the, the big issue I had was what battery do we put in here? And so I ended up going with a smaller 2S LiPo, which I will show right now. And I think this is actually the battery that I uh, got from out of darts for the Nightingale. So it's just a, kind of a smaller battery, as you can see there. And also make sure to tuck the leads down that way they don't get caught up here. On the front here, I did reprint this piece. This piece was a, it was black before. I, I like it as the neon yellow. And I did throw a flashlight on here because I think this would be pretty sweet in like a night game. Battery tray just slides on the front. You got these little pins that just goes right in there and uh, just push that right in there, good to go. So let's start with build quality since we're already kind of talking about it. Now, there is some uh, not so desirable uh, printer artifacts, if you will, on this thing. Um, not sure exactly what happened. Now, overall, the print quality is it's fine, but there's just a couple areas that are just a little not nice. <laughs> uh, mainly up, up on the front, you can see there was just some like some issues with like, it almost looks like it was printed a bit fast without proper supports. That's the only thing I can think. But other than that, everything else looks okay. One strange thing is uh, these sights right here, I actually fed in that filament. Usually, uh, Mr. Heath Pants, the way he designed this is he made it so you can just put filament in there to get these cool, you know, sights. So I just threw some of my yellow in there. I also wanted to, I did reprint the slide lock, because I wasn't too impressed with some of the parts on there. And the big part that I want to really take some time to talk about is lubrication. There was, uh, this is pretty like, um, it's kind of crunchy before. It didn't have a good, a good feel. You know, when you get these things, I don't know, maybe they don't want to lubricate them too much before they throw them in the in the mail and send it to you. So just keep in mind, if you purchase something like this, be familiar with the blaster. You're probably gonna have to take it apart. This does break down really nicely. It's got two pins. Take the front pin off, 
that'll allow you to pull off the battery, get to the battery compartment, and then this back pin will allow you to basically slide the whole thing off, and then you essentially take out one screw and then slide out this center uh, slide lock, and then the whole thing just comes apart. It's really nice. I, I really like the, the design of this from Mr. Heath Pants, so, so I just wanna say kudos to you. The other thing we're talking about is the magazines. I had a little bit of trouble with uh, Talon mags, which this is what this blaster is uh, intended for. This is the Talon version. And I actually was having a lot of problems with this falling out. So it's a little better now, but you can see I can pull it out without hitting the release. So I don't know what's going on with that. I did reprint that ledge because I thought maybe it was worn down or something, but no, it still kind of does it. It doesn't do it as bad now because I did print that part in like a high end fill, but it is what it is. The magazines that were sent with this are not the most pretty magazine. Um, if I can help it, I'm gonna run, you know, just standard talons in this thing. This top up here, this little locking area, that allows you to basically, well, so you got your slide lock right here. We'll kind of point that out. You got your slide lock, so. That way, you know, you can basically throw your mag in and, you know, have it slap forward. Uh, I think it's more for cosmetic. It's not really like, it doesn't like chamber around or anything. So it's just more for maybe jam clearing. So you can kind of look down in there and get to the flywheels. But this little guy on the side, this is the lock that allows you to, once you pull the pins out, you can actually slide the whole thing off. Let's go ahead and talk about performance. Uh, we took this outside, got some chronograph readings. This is off 3S LiPo, so keep that in mind. And uh, when I was outside doing range and accuracy with this blaster, that was uh, when I was having a lot of issues with, I'd have to pull the trigger twice. And um, I don't know what was going on. So when I was in here opening it up and taking a look, I actually added some lubrication. I thought that would clear up that issue, but it turned out it didn't. So as you can see right here, there is a, an area that I believe needs to have a spring. This was not in mine. Once I put the spring in there, one, one trigger pull, one shot. So I don't know if that was something that was left out or if maybe they, they figured out, they figured that, you know, it wasn't really necessary. I'm not sure. So um, it is what it is. I threw, a, I threw a tension spring in there and the thing works fine now. So maybe it was, I, I don't know. I just wanted to make sure to make note of that so people know. So now there's no issues with it. The blaster performs really well. Uh, we took this out and got some range. So I shot a target at 30 feet, perfectly fine. This, uh, this is actually, I'd probably run this more as a sidearm. So, you know, in that regard, this thing is just a great, you know, thing I can just pull out and pop off a few shots, so. So in the end, can I recommend the Pigeon Mark VIII? I would say yes, I think this is a very cool blaster. If you like the Desert Eagle type of look, like a big old, big old pistol, you know, looking thing, this thing is great. I want to find a good holster for it. So I'm gonna have to look around. I probably have to pull the, uh, the light off of it. I don't know if I could really do a magnetic holster on here. We'll have to see. If you, if you know of a good holster for the, the Pigeon, let me know in the comment section. In the future, I wanna get this thing play tested and see how it performs. You know, is this a really good dependable sidearm? So if you have a Pigeon, if you know if this is a good one, let me know in the comment section. But besides that, I wanna thank you for watching today's video. I'm Dr. Flux. As always, be safe and happy foam flinging.